him am I okay then I do uh, do not not like and like them and then uh, them Sam All right, and then Sam I and I am I already have. Okay, so, so this is the set of the two, two shingles in here. So you can see that this captures you know, certain common things that will occur multiple times, like, like, uh, like the words I do and um, do not will reoccur. Yeah. I'm a little confused in here. K in the shingle represent the number of character or? So K is the number of consecutive, in this case, words. That, that I'm going to group together. So you can do it with characters also, and I'll, I'll run through a sh smaller example with that later. But How do you define the value of k when it should be to the four of eight? Yeah, so that's a good question, actually. Uh, um, different k's work better for different, um, for in, in different scenarios. So for instance, um, and usually the k is, it's, it's smaller than you might expect, right? A k equal to three or four is often pretty good. Um, usually, the longer the longer the documents are in your in your corpus of documents, um, the the longer the value k. If they're shorter, you're going to need something shorter. And if they're really short, you probably want to use characters instead of words. Um, so, like in analyzing Twitter, I think. Words is loosely defined in Twitter, right? Um, so characters, you know, might work better. But I think people are still trying to figure out how to understand what's going on in Twitter. It's, um, it's like a pretty challenging thing. It's, it, I mean, even if you speak English, it can be hard to interpret in tweets. So um, uh, okay, so um, okay, so so this is the representation. So. In, in, in general, as, as Razor was asking about, it's, it's, you know, you have every, for a K shingle or a K gram, it's K consecutive words, every set of K consecutive words you see here. Um, and so what's the, so, you know, if there are, if there are N, N words here, how much space would this take to, in order to write this out? So I mean, it, it was it was probably as painful for you to to you know sit there and watch me write this out as it was for me to actually write it on the board, right? Um, I figured I should work out the example though, but um, but it's, it's what like how big can this be? It, it looks like it's is it going to explode like to a huge size or is it is it reasonable? What be better? Smaller would be better because you, if you have n words in the document, it needs to be smaller than n by two or n by four. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, I, in in general, the size is going to be about k times n. Or if you're familiar with the big O notation, it's O of k times n. The number of words you need to write in the, in the set of all shapes. Right, so as k goes up, you're you're multiplying the space by a factor of k. So the larger grams are going to take more space. Um, also, but with smaller grams, so if, if you if you wrote up how many words I wrote here, let's see, I had six words, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. So I had twenty-two words in my original document. So I'm going to have to store at least. 22 words, but it's probably not 44 words here. I bet it's, you know, probably closer to like in the low 30s. So we're just talking about individual words, not unique, just not unique words. Yeah, so if you're storing this representation on a hard drive, it, and, and your, your text fits on the hard drive, is this also going to fit on the hard drive? So if you're multiplying by size 2 or size 3, Probably, right? You probably, you know, maybe you need an extra hard drive to fit it all, right? But you can buy one more hard drive if you already have one hard drive. It's not, it's not exploding. If it was something like n squared, then this would probably, it might be too much. And you may not be able to buy enough hard drives to, to fit everything for a really big, you 
you know, set of documents. So this is not too bad. And usually you do this for an individual document, which is only going to be, you know, maybe has a has, has two or three thousand words in it, right? So so this isn't too bad of uh, too bad of an explosion here. And if you have a lot of repetition, like um, like like I like uh, the phrase I do occurs twice. Um, you know, Sam I am, Sam I and I am occurs. You know, this phrase I am occurs three times. So you're 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 not completely getting this k times n flow. Um, so it's it's not too bad, but there's not too much repetition. Uh, so you're not going to save too much, but it's not 44 words here. I'm guessing maybe 35 is my guess. So I'm going to count. You have 15 you said, so 15 back to 30. 30, only 30. So so it was, you know, it's. It was close to a factor, closer to a factor one than a factor two. So, um, okay. So um, the, the other way to do it is with uh, if you're going to do it with just the characters. Um, so, so I, I'm just going to do that. I just want to do that on on the, the first part here, uh, just to demonstrate that. Let me. Let's see. If I do, I'm going to do the the um, the k um, 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 the k character shingles of just the first two lines. Um, and so for k equals three, then I'm going to have i a m. So we're always omitting. Spaces and character words. So I'm doing that in my examples, but that's that's actually that's another modeling question. Should you throw away the punctuation and the white space? Um, should you try and use those to do something smarter? These are these are you know these are good good questions. I am A M S M S A S A M a M I M I A. These are all the sets, I believe. Um, so notice I've also thrown away if 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 letters capitalized when I did these character shingles. Um, that's another choice. Maybe you you know want to keep the capitalization. Um, so. I, I'm going to skip doing it for four because I think you understand. But it's it's in the you can see it in the notes if you want to. So, um, right. So so you can do the character shingles and there and so you like you guys have been asking lots of good questions already, right? Um, so the, there 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 are lots of choices here. So um, you know um, how big um, to make. Okay, and so, um, so for, so I, you know, I, I think in both cases, you know, three to five is usually a good number I've heard. Um, this isn't my area of expertise. I don't do a lot of text modeling, but from the people I've talked to, they said something smaller than than I would have expected when I when I first looked at this is is, is usually usually enough to get get structure here. And and the. One other choice is you use, you know, the words or the um, use words or characters. So, so you know, it's easier to think about the words, right? You can you understand what what a set of words mean. Um, a set of characters, AMS. I I have no idea what this means, right? Um, but the the shingles for characters. They tell you the shingles for words, right? You can, if 
if you have a set of words, you can, um, you're going to see that same structure embedded in the shingles for the characters. Because if the words are going to, if you're going to have some, some, uh, some set of words, which is, which is reoccurring, um, like if you have, um, if, if you have I do occurring twice, well, the characters I, D, O are also going to occur twice in the shingles, right? So you're going to still pick this up. So the, the, the characters work, work pretty well too. Um, yeah. But don't you think, like, with the word, you can do more because, like, half the characters don't make sense, so you're having a lot of useless data if you use characters. Well, they don't make sense, but they like, might be. MI, MIA, those are. Well, so if you look at them by themselves, um, um, those characters are not making sense, right? But if you string them together, if you have the set of all the characters and all the shingles in your document um, together, it's it, it's it's still, it's still going to make some sense. Um, so, open it gives you some kind of information. Like if you have documents that were in long documents in different languages, you take a short character shingle. It's likely that the, the language is having exactly the same profile of different letter combinations. Yeah, uh, right. English between whether something's in English or French based on a very short shingle of characters because they have different information. Yeah, that's a good point, right? So um, I'll, I'll just repeat this. So so you, so one way of thinking is you have two two documents which are both in a language you don't understand. So the words don't make any more sense than the characters, right? Um, but there's not a lot of overlap in words. But if you break down down the shingles by characters, you see some similar patterns occurring. And this may help you determine that they may be from the same language, right? Even if you don't understand what they mean, they may have similar characteristics of which letters appear next to each other. Um, or even which letters appear, right? Some, you know, some languages have, like German has, you know, accents. You know, have, have, has this character, right? And, or maybe they're trying to get rid of it, I don't know. But, um, and there's accents and stuff on the stuff, which which you can choose to keep in your shingles, or you can choose not to. Like one reason to keep it is that it'll help distinguish languages. One reason not to keep it is that, well, people maybe spell it differently. Sometimes they don't want to type out the accent character on the keyboard because it takes longer, or they're lazy, or something like that, right? So so maybe you're you're maybe there's Sam, and then there's some some like. Uh, Sam from maybe Eastern Europe that has this weird thing over the A, right? Are they are they really the same person or just it's this Eastern Europe version of Dr. Seuss? I you know I don't know. Um, so if you had gotten rid of it, then you could say oh they're the same. But if you didn't get rid of it, then you say oh these are different, and that tells you different things. One tells you about the type of language. One tells you about are they telling the same story, right? Um, so these are. These are the choices, and it depends on your application, right? You need to you need to think of your your, your uh, what your application is. Um, you know, punctuation, right? Do you include the punctuation in here, right? Do you include it in in the word shingles? You know, here if I have if I have a Sam here with the period, right? If I have the period after I am then I am period is different than I am not period. So these would be different, but there's really some sort of repetition going on. Um, so, um, and punctuation can maybe, um, uh, punctuation can maybe um, tell you something also about the type of language it comes from. I've, I've noticed with some of my colleagues who went to school in, in India that they, they speak very good English, but their punctuation is different. Um, they'll use spaces differently around punctuation, or they'll use, you know, the colon instead of the semicolon in, in different ways. Um, and you can maybe say something about language by looking at the punctuation. But this would, this would probably be hard to pick up. There'd probably be a lot more other other cues. But and and also this, but this may help you distinguish between what sort of of documented it is. A news article, which is very formally written with a very <coughs> fine protocol, may have very different punctuation than a blog, which has different <coughs> punctuation than Twitter, which 
you know, may have crazy punctuation. What does five exclamation points mean as opposed to eight exclamation points? More important. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or maybe, maybe eight means it's more humorous, where five is, is still important, right? But if you get beyond five, that's ridiculous. You learn everything that you need for the uh, yeah. for there's, uh, there's, there's a lot going on there that um, it, it's something that makes me feel old. I'll tell you that. So, um, okay, so, um, yeah, so. So, one general rule is with, with these, these choices is that you want a pretty small probability of, of maybe you should, you should aim, aim for 1% one, uh, 1 you know, have a um, uh, um, like one percent have a collision, like inside the documents, right? And for maybe one percent of things are colliding. So I pick I pick this passage because it has lots of repetition, and it shows it's it's showing it's showing a lot of the repetition and the compression you can do. But maybe you should only aim for something small, like one one to five percent of the actual shingles are colliding with other shingles in your document. You want something pretty small. It means that when you have a collision, it's actually meaningful. There's actually some, some actual meaningful thing going on there. Um, so maybe aim for something small number of collisions is some, some advice I've been given uh, for you know, people who, who, who work in this um, area um, uh, more than I do. So, um, Let's see. So the, the, the other um, the, the other kind of pretty pretty important choice that you need to consider are um, stop words. Um, these are things like um, like the, the, these are common words like uh, a um, you the on at to you know things like this. There, there are libraries online you can find of common stop words. And these words occur over and over again. And so there are a couple things you can do with them. Sometimes you would just for shingles you just want to exclude stop words. These don't they're not carrying a lot of meaning to them. Like like the word of eggs maybe is carrying meaning, right? It's it's a noun, it's important. And these you know are not they're not adding much meaning or content to the stuff around. So maybe you want to, uh, one option is to ignore them. Um, so the, but there's, you know, something else that works well is you want to actually use these stop words and say, um, one option I've heard that works well is to use k equals three. Um, um, and, and so shingles um, must, have the the first word as a stop word, right? If you do this, so you're going to have a smaller number of shingles, so it's going to compress your document more. You're only going to start with with this with the stop word. Um, so um, so maybe do is a stop word. So then you have do not like. Um, Maybe this is, is not a good example, but you have something like, um, you know, uh, um, um, the best um, class, right? So maybe this is something you'll say about this class if I'm, if I'm lucky, right? So, but you, you captured some nice concept here because you started with the as, as a stop word, and the best class is like some concept you can kind of understand or something, right? And so when you when you do this k equals three where the first word is a stop word, it tends to bring out things kind of like this, which maybe are more interpretable and, and tend to, you know, the, when they start with the stop word, these are also the things that tend to collide more. So if your goal is more to compress the document while picking out important shingles, 
this this may be a good good a good strategy. So, um, okay. So there's one more general kind of approach um, um, we want to talk about, and that's um, um, stemming. So stemming is is taking kind of the core part of a word, <coughs> right? Um, so so this takes core part of, of, of the word. So um, you know, um, so, is that, is it, so like the word playing uh, would go to um, play, right? So the, the key word there is play. You're, you're taking off the ending, right? If you had eggs, you know, this this example from eggs, you would this would this would be trimmed to just the word egg, right? The s sign. So so then if you see if you, you're talking about eggs and then they talk about an egg, you know that's really the same thing. And there are these uh, these techniques that that will can take words and trim them down to their core word. And there so there are ways to kind of do this automatically, but actually, you know the the English language is not that large, and it, now you can fit, you know, uh, like whole dictionaries that know how to trim words in probably, like, actually into the actually into the memory uh, of your machine, not even on the hard drive, right? So it can quickly access, look up a word, and and convert it to its stem form, right? And so then, this may be more useful in a shingle, or maybe in this in this. Model of the bag of words. We were just keeping keeping the the actual stem part of the word. And so, so the stuff I've talked about here, all these choices that we've had to make. This is kind of starting to touch on the edge of um, natural language processing, uh, uh, which is this you know this whole field in itself. This uh, and and so there's there's a class in the department on. A natural language processing you can take, and there'll be a lot more. So they'll they may start and look at some basics of this, but they'll also look at the the structure and the meaning of sentences. They'll try and say, um, if you look at a sentence, you're saying this is um, so this 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 like is the verb, and the eggs and the ham are the nouns in, in the sentence, and try and understand the structure, and you can get a lot more out of it. You get a lot more about the meaning of the sentence and use that to um, try to compare things. Um, but that's, this can get a lot more to the modeling and very specific with language and we're not going to go any, any, any further in this direction. Instead, you know, this is, uh, I'm going to try and use this idea of the shingling um, and any form of it you want. I've, what I've done is I've created these, <coughs> I've created this document and I've turned it into these these sets, and now I can use the jacquard similarity to say how similar um, these different documents are. Right? This whole process was to convert this document into these sets. Right? And there are different choices you can make how you do this, this modeling. But now that you have it in these sets, now I have this well-defined similarity I can use to say how similar are these documents. And you know the very early. Uh, Span detection techniques, or detecting if two homework assignments were were copied off one another, use techniques you know very similar. To this. There are more much more advanced you know techniques now. So you know just because I taught you this doesn't mean you can you can pull. Uh, but uh, hopefully I still need to be worried about this. But uh, um, but, but th these these techniques work actually surprisingly well. These work. Very well on the, on the web for understanding the content of web pages and how similar web pages are. If there's a lot of overlap between the web pages, the jacquard similarity is going to be pretty high. Um, and very similar, these this example I use with these these recipes, right? The the recipe web pages will look very similar, have very similar content to each other. They'll try and change a little bit and. You really don't want to get both of these pages. You want to get distinct pages. You want to filter out the pages which are too similar to each other. 
Whereas if they're written by different people, even if they're basically saying the same thing, um, the, the card similarity will probably be pretty different. Um, even different structure of text. If you use the, the two shingles, it's going to, the similar is going to look pretty different. Um, so let me, uh, Oh, board space. Let me uh, just go through an example of the Jacquard similarity between these these objects here. So I'm going to treat now. I'm going to treat these individual lines as as on um, different documents. You know, yeah, has to keep moving it every time I run back and forth. Uh, so you have let's say this is document one, document two, document three, and document four, and now we're going to use this space to say, if I used the, this is what I have in my so I'm going to use the two shingles, um, k equals two, and, and I'm going to use words, and I'm going to ignore all punctuation and, and all punctuation and all that. Um, let's compute the um, Jacquard similarity in between these lines, right? So I'm going to do the, the Jacquard similarity between A and, and B. Right, so the, I'll, I'll kind of cheat and write these tuples by just underlining the different um, two tuples here. So I do, do not, not like, like green, green A, 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 and M. So, so I have all I don't have any repeats inside of each of the each of the documents. All right. So so now, what's the Jacquard similarity between um, D1 and D2 with uh, the two shingles of words? Okay. So there's some confusion. So I'll I'll go, I'll, I'll go through this in a bit more detail. So the, the, the two shingles here are going to be I, um, I, M, and M, Sam, and this is going to be Sam, I, and I, M. Uh, so, so, so now the, the intersection is, is going to be just I, M, right? And the union here, is, is going to be I M um, Sam Sam and Sam I. Right. So, so now the one over three. Right. So I, I heard a lot of one over fours, um, but the, the the union does not count the I and plus. Right. Okay. Um, so the, so now. What's the um, Jacquard similarity between A and C? So you don't even need to count all the shingles, right? Right, there's, there's no intersection there, so it's zero. Right? Oh wait, I wrote... I, I wrote what all of you said, and no one, no one corrected me. Let's <laughs> one over three, right? Yeah. Uh, in NLP, when we did this n-gram, uh, we used to calculate like the phi and phi phi also as one tuple, like uh, and like uh, for every first word, we consider one more set, uh, including a phi at the beginning of every sentence. Like oh, it has, has the stop at the end of the sentence, and you use that as one of the, the elements. Yeah, like phi at the like starting of every sentence, so like phi I is also uh, a okay. example yeah. to add here. Um, right, so th so this is another variation that um, Amina was explaining. So in instead of just looking, so apparently a, a common thing to do is instead of just looking at the words in here, you assume every sentence starts with some special character phi, um, which is one of these, which is a word, right? So now the first n-gram here would be phi i, 
first one here is phi sam, first one here is phi i, and then phi i also. So now, this one and this one start off the same way, and they would have some intersection. Um, so, so this is, you know, the start of the sentence is important, so you may want to do this. Um, because I, I have the numbers in my notes for this other way, I'm, I, I'm going to go through the example without and, and not use this extra fee. Um, but the, the, that's another common example. There are lots of variations of this you can do, and you need to you know, decide what works best for your application, right? Um, so we'll see other kind of types of data throughout the class, and you're going to have to make a decision and get it into some abstract type like a set that you can then use, and there are going to be different ways of doing it, right? Um, Okay, so, so what is, okay, so let's finish off these examples. A, A, D is going to be, oh, I don't know, I, I know the problem why you're all confused. Yeah, yeah well, when, the, when the board is, if it's too big, you can't see one side from the other side. If it's too small, and I have to erase them, so. Um, Okay, so, 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 okay, hopefully, hopefully you're less confused now. Sorry about that. So, so, um, one over eight. So, AD. One over eight. One over eight. Why is that correct? I am is the only common one, and if you don't count I am, then you have eight different sets. Or right. elements in the set. There's seven sets here, and yeah. one extra one here. Right. Right, so this is one over eight. Um, the card uh, similarity between uh, B and C is going to be. Is there anything that overlaps there? No. So it's zero. The card between B and D. Total number of things is going to be seven. Right. You have seven on in D and no new ones in, in D. So you're going to have two over seven, right? And then uh, the last one is between C and and D. Okay. So so what do we have overlapping here? We have we have I do, do not, and I'm not like. And then this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, 11. So we're going to have 3 over, three over, <coughs> three over 11. Uh, right, so, um, okay, so, so, so if you look at these scores, um, so, it's, so, it's, so what does the Jacquard similarity tell you about? Which of these sentences are most similar to each other? What? B and D are pretty similar. They, they have a whole phrase which is repeated. All of B is repeated, repeated inside of B. C and D also have a fair amount of, of, of repeats. And, and, and E and D are both short and they have a lot of repetition, right? So saying these are the ones that are more, um, more similar to each other. Um, now there there are other forms of a of, of a of a distance where you could just look at the um, you could you could um, so some people would say that maybe the most similar are going to be B e and D e. and this should be really these should be really similar to each other because all of B e is repeated inside of D e again right. Um, so you can think of tweaking this um, this this distance. Um, so um, so it, it's it's going to emphasize that you know the um, um, that, that that this score is going to be higher. Um, and so one way of doing that, let's see. 
there's this, I'm trying to remember, there's this paper a couple of years ago that showed there's this whole family of distances. You can use these two and also the exclusive or in many different combinations. And certain of them made sense as distances, and, and certain of them we'll be able to use in this locality sense of hashing technique we'll, we'll talk about next week to do this all very efficiently. Um, and you can use something like the intersection over the, uh, the, uh, um, the exclusive or. The exclusive or would just be the things which are in one of them, but not in the other. So we, you would not count these last two tuples. So then it would be two over five instead, and it would be an even larger score. Um, and so th there are variations on this distance, but generally people use the, <coughs> uh, uh, the Jacquard distance. Um, OK, so one last thing I want to talk about before we finished is the last thing I managed to leave on the board was the, uh, the Jacquard similarity with, with, uh, with clustering. So maybe this seemed kind of strange at the time I was writing it up. But now that you look back at the, at the modeling, what are some of the modeling choices that we made which are kind of implicitly doing this Jacquard similarity with clustering, right? So when, we, when I took out the uppercase letters, I made everything lowercase, I'm essentially clustering two things together if they had the same letters but one was uppercase and one was lowercase, right? If I'm taking out the punctuation, then this I am and this I am period are really the same thing. I've clustered them together, right? Um, so if I'm, like, really common is if you're doing stemming, right? You're doing stemming, I'm taking these words and I'm taking the important part of the word, right? The core parts. Um, that's really clustering together words. And some clusters are gonna be much bigger than other clusters. There's only, maybe there's only one cluster of, of do, right? Of, of the word do. There, there's nothing that it stems to, right? Um, well, that's not true. Like, I guess it does and do. Um, okay, well, I can tell I'm not a, like, sort of NLP. So, um, like, if you talk to Ellen, she'd probably come up with 100 examples off the top of her head. So, um, 